Yeah, uh, good to be here. My, uh, my name is Hendrik. I'm the co-founder of AMP Technologies. And I want to talk to you guys today a little bit about uh, the, yeah, basically the impact that IoT had on a couple of rural electrification projects that we have been involved in over the last couple of years, um, but also a little bit on the way forward in this regard. And in order to start, I want to take you to a very particular place. So I really want to take you to a village in Tanzania, uh, which is a very rural village. The village, the name is Changombe. It is in the Manyara region of Tanzania, and it has about a uh, population of about 2,000 people. And it didn't have any access to electricity till, yeah, till 2017. And as you can see, it's actually a very beautiful place. Um, well, the problem with the access of electricity was eventually solved in Q1 of 17 uh, by a project developer called Rafiki Power. And what they basically did is they built a solar mini-grid in that village uh, to pro provide electricity to that village. And not just the solar system, but they really, sorry, they really provided a distribution grid to individual households and businesses in that village. And um, so, so the main goal of those kind of mini-grids is that you want to increase the standard of living and give, give people in the village opportunities that they didn't have before. And I just want to share a couple of pictures of what this mini-grid actually accomplished. Um, so people were now able to run laundry services in those villages. They were able to cold store, I mean, drinks and foods, but then also things like vaccinations and, and these kind of things. They were also come up to extend their, their businesses by having electrical appliances for, for a hairdresser shop, for example. But I think most importantly, what those villages, uh, or what the goal is of the electrification of those villages, is enhance the economic activity in that village and the economic output. So this is why it was uh, very important that the technology was able to make sure that equipment like welders or drillers and even corn grinders were able, were able to operate. So this was all enabled by this solar mini-grids. So a solar mini-grid usually consists of a centralized powerhouse where you have solar panels on top, for example. Then a lot of times you just have a, have a container where you have inside all the power electronics of that village and then you also have some battery storage for, for the night. Then you have uh, usually just a 230 volt, 50 hertz electricity grid that goes to the individual households and businesses. And then a lot of times you actually have smart meters installed at each of the individual households. Um, mainly, it, it measures data like voltages and energy consumption, but it's mainly used also for payments and, and for making sure uh, that, that Customers can have basically a prepaid plan on, on how, to, how to consume electricity. But in general, you have two places where you would definitely uh, have some kind of measurements and some kind of technical data that is gathered. So first on the consumption side at the smart meters, but then also on the power electronic sites, which is usually the battery inverters and the PV inverters. Um, and what most people also don't know is that most of those villages actually have a pretty good mobile data connectivity, so it is actually possible to access this kind of data. And this is where, where our company comes in. So our company currently monitors more than 100 of those kind of solar mini-grids across multiple countries in Africa. And by doing so, we can use the operational data to help developers of those kind of mini-grids improve many activities across the whole value chain for those developers. So it starts with project finance by making those projects more bankable, by proving that you can actually deliver what you promised. But then also things like system design and engineering for benchmarking, uh, benchmarking systems against each other, technologies, and so on. But maybe most importantly, the, the technical maintenance and the, the operations of those kind of systems uh, is usually very complex. And so how are we doing it? It's 
relatively straightforward. So we have two ways in which we can gather data from those systems. Either we install a local gateway at those systems that would then talk to each of the individual devices and sense the data in the cloud, or we have a direct API connection to some of the equipment vendors that have their own cloud platforms where we tap in and gather those data points. We store off the, all of the data in an influx database. We apply some analytics and alerting on it with um, Capacitor mainly, but uh, just recently we also started with, uh, with another open source framework, which is called LoudML, which we use for anomaly detection. And then we visualize all of this data in, in Grafana. And now I want to uh, get a little bit more hands-on on, on, on two use cases where, where it actually proved very, very helpful. Um, so one of the things that is, that is good to emphasize is that those villages are really remote. And whatever can be done to not going out there and try to fix things yourself is extremely valuable. Um, so this is actually a picture of a former colleague uh, of ours that was trying to reach one of the villages in Tanzania and well, got stuck in the mud. And that was just the short rains in Tanzania. In the long rains, it's even worse. Um, yeah, and so one of, the, one of the problems where we actually use Grafana is actually one that you see here. So what you see in this picture is the smart meter voltages of one mini-grid, um, where each of the points is an individual household, and the color represents the voltage at this, at this point. And what you can see also in the graph, by the way, is that a certain part of the grid had like some kind of voltage drop and the other parts didn't. And if you know how you build your electricity grid and your grid topology, it's quite straightforward for you to identify remotely where this, where this problem is and that it's potentially a cable, cable issue. So you were able to localize where this cable issue is and then how does this translate to on the ground? It's literally you go to the place where you localize it you dig out the cable, and then in this particular case, you find that the cable actually was damaged. You fix the cable, and this is how it looks afterwards. So it's, it's just very good also in terms of you know, validating what has been done on the ground and that, that it actually worked. Um, so that was the first case. The second case brings us back to the village that I mentioned at the beginning, to Changombe. And there, let's look at the solar data of, of this village. So in this graph, you see two things. So you see in green the battery state of charge. Um, that would, you can see it's about three days of data. Um, and then in yellow, you would see the solar power. And one of the things that you would notice is that once the battery reaches the maximum state of charge, the solar power gets curtailed because there is, the load is not enough and the battery is full. So what do you want to do with the solar power? You can't use it, so you curtail it. Uh, so there's a lot of unused PV uh, power a lot of times. Well, at the same time, there was a new project coming along in this village, which was a water pumping project, which was commissioned in 2018. And it had a big tank with about 10,000 liters of capacity. So I mean, this is great, right? We have excess solar energy, and we have a water water tank that needs to be filled with, you know, an electric pump. So why don't we come up with a solution that would then make sure that the tank is just being filled with, those, with this excess energy? And this is exactly what has been done. So what you see in the two graphs below is in red is the grid frequency, and in blue is the water pump when it was operating, so the power consumption of the water pump. And what you see here is that whenever you had excess, excess solar electricity, the grid frequency would rise. This is an off-grid system, something that is very, very common for, for communication. Uh, this is usually done by the battery inverter in an off-grid energy system. And this can then be taken at the water pump by a frequency controller that would monitor the grid frequency and would react to a higher frequency by switching on the pump and by pumping the water into the tank, which is exactly what happened. So at the end of the day, this led to lots of happy faces and like a very successful water pump operation in this village 
with about yeah 400 liters per hour that was actually being able to be to be processed. Well, and that's it. That's what that's all uh, that I wanted to talk about. Um, we are we are a young startup work, working on this for about eight months now. Uh, as I said, operating about a uh, hundred mini grids, um, and we are hiring at the moment. So if you guys are interested, just hit me up. Thanks.